yes people good evening hope you're all well big up to all of you thank you so much for watching the stream earlier if you haven't done so please go check it out all my thoughts on Bayern and all my thoughts on villa this weekend so please go check that one out please click the link in the description to surfshark vpn if you haven't got a vpn already then please make sure that you click on that link and sort yourself one out tonight we're talking all things ffp talking all about their weekend preview and to do that i've got both the days with me and emilio connor's going to be joining us later and we're going to have joe with us as well big up to rich in the chat big up to emma hope you're both well and hope everybody in the chat is well also um let's talk about this um first of all right dave i'll start with you because obviously forest have been um kind of affected by this one i want to kind of put in a comparison of forest and everton and man city and chelsea now people in the chat will talk about oh Man City and Chelsea haven't admitted to anything yet. Forrest and Everton have admitted to it. So if that's the case, then why are we? what are we expecting when charges come out against Man City and Chelsea, if that is to be the case? And the other thing I want to talk about before we move into this luxury tax idea is basically, isn't it convenient for you that as soon as Everton and Forrest get their points deducted, this luxury tax comes out all of a sudden? <coughs> Forrest and Everton going to probably deduct points from you, but we don't really want to chuck Man City and Chelsea out of the league. So let's think of something up. Luxury tax, that'll do. Let's bring that in. And if they spend over it, we'll just fine them when they do it. Bearing in mind, you've already been docked points. Like, to me, it sounds mad. So we're going to incorporate a little bit of everything. But my first thoughts to you is how things are running at Forest right now and where you stand on the points deduction and the fact that Everton, who will bring Connor in later, have been deducted more points, it seems. So it's a mess, man. This this is a mess, Dave. Do, do you know what, uh, Dan? Your use of the word mess um, replicates the word that uh, Nuno used earlier. Do you know what I mean? In his, in his presser. Yeah. He, he, ref, he referred to it, Nuno referred to it as a mess. And it's just, it, it swirls around. There's no... There's nothing set, nothing stable, you know, and, and, and you know, <laughs> I go back to the forest statement that was made, you know, we came clean about our points deduction. We got, we, we could, we should have got six. We got four because we were, Hey, we're banged to rights. Here's, here's everything you need to see. Total transparency, total cooperation. You know, we were like contrite and, uh, and that's why we got points knocked off. You know what I mean? But it, it just, it's the most, do you know what, Dan? It's the most tiresome subject. We mm. want to talk about a, a football being kicked or headed and tackles made and, you know, our teams playing badly or, or playing well or whatever. We don't really, I don't really want to talk about money. I, know, I, was, I was in industry, Dan, for 28 years and every time, like, they talked about profit and loss and all this kind of stuff, I used to switch off. I'm, maybe I'm just not a, a guy who's, like, attuned to a world of money, really. But as regards Forrest... Um, we're all sort of other players, and you know, I don't. Nuno's clearly unhappy about it. Um, we're all unhappy about it. Uh, I'm unhappy about it because I just don't think it reflects well on my club. Um, but it is what it is, and from what I can gather, the lads themselves, and they are the most important people. Um, you know, after the fans. Uh, they're getting on with the job, and I don't think it's really re um, affecting them too much. You know, all that, all they can think about is their opponents on a piece of green grass at the weekend, and that's all they can think about, really. But it's not, it's not an ideal scenario, you know, because it's not ideal uh, for the fact that you know we might get a table altered after all of the games have been played, which is like deeply unsatisfying. I mean, it, it's not good for us. It's not good for Everton. It's not good for Luton. It's not good for Burnley and Sheffield United and the other and Brentford and the other teams that are in that bit of the bottom. Um, the Forest statement, I go back to that because it basically said there are 86 clubs over here and there are six over here. And these six are seen as being untouchable. They, they can do no wrong. That 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 that's that was the inference of the of the forest statement in the time, and I thought it was it was it was Nottingham Forest almost so to say, let's us eighty six get together and rebel against these other six. That's the way I read it. But to to answer your question, Dan, it is what it is. Um, I I don't think you know we as a club have, have dealt with what's been given to us. You know we we lost four points, we got them back relatively quickly uh, by beating you know by drawing with Palace and then beating Fulham. 
So uh, we're, we're kind of back to where we were with six games left. But to be honest with you, mate, I, I find the whole thing tiresome and, and, and boring, really. So uh, it, it's a subject I want to get away with away from if I can, mate. Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, listen, Cass is throwing you love in the chat, man. He says you're not acknowledging him. My own granddad. Sharp <laughs> uh... <laughs> lad he is. Yeah, all the best, Cass. Big up, lad. Big up, Cass, really man. Big up, Cass. Love um, me, yeah, listen, Dave, Luton are going to be potentially affected by this, bruv, with these points deductions. And it might be in a good way, but I called it a mess and I kind of stand by it. I don't really understand how they pick these points deductions. And Sam summed it up in the WhatsApp group that we've got the best with Rod Stewart just picking out the next ball game. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was class. <laughs> and, like, you know, that is a perfect meme, really, isn't it? How many points are you going to deduct? And it's just Rod Stewart going, there you go, number five. It's, like, mad. And I think that is basically how they do it. Well, it seems how they're doing it. There's no rules. There's no understanding. It's all a nonsense. Not that Luton really care too much in relation to how many points Everton and Forest get deducted. But at the same time, I kind of feel like if I was a Luton fan, I'd want to stay up without the points mattering. So I just want to stay up. So then people can't go, oh, Luton only stayed up because Forrest got points deducted or Everton, whoever it be. Just like got to be dealing with that. So this definitely affects Luton as well, Dave, don't it? 100%. Um, yeah, of course it does. Uh, firstly, I'm going to say, and I don't want to be controversial because I like everybody. I really do. But I think <laughs> you know, the punishment should fit the crime. First off, that should happen uh, regardless of uh, what you do. And uh, Nottingham Forest, yeah, they helped out. And then they've said, actually, we don't agree with you now, so we're going to, you know, we're going to appeal against it. So they've stopped helping now. So I would say there's no consistency with the punishment for both teams. There aren't. There is no consistency there. There's no consistency for Nottingham Forest. There's no consistency against Everton. Everton have been found guilty twice, yet they reduced the 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 the, the, the deductions. Now I'm not saying, you know, that. The, the, the Premier League are right with what they've done. But if you're going to have a punishment system, make sure it sticks all of the time to everybody in the same way. And I don't think that's happened. And it, you've got to also remember that as a Luton fan, we took a major deduction many, many years ago. And it pushed us out of the division. Swindon Town, they had a major deduction. They got to the Premier League and they were relegated two divisions. Um, there is no consistency. So Dave's right. You know, we don't know how this is going to end up at the moment, so you've just got to forget about it and play on. As a Luton fan, I would hoping that, you know, I don't care how we stay up now. You know how much I've loved being here. You know how much I've loved this division. Uh, I didn't expect to love it as much as I have, and I don't care how we stay in it, personally. But, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather it be through what we've done on the pitch rather than what's happened off the pitch, really. But if it come down that Nottingham Forest, you know, don't get any appeal back and Everton don't get any more deductions and we stay up by that two points or that one point. Genuinely, I have to be totally honest with you, I will love it. Right. And that's that's a terrible thing to say because I love the people that I talk to on, on this pod and I love the clubs that you know I've got involved with. But until they put some consistency in there, what 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 deterrent is it for any club of any size? I mean, Luton should have just come up and spent 200 million we didn't have. And be deducted four points, you know, and we might have had a better chance of staying up. What? Where is where is the the thing that's going to put your club um, at risk? There, no one's going to bother about it, are they? No one's going to. And a rich owner is going to come in. He's going to pile some money in, knowing the fact that precedents have already been set by Everton and Nottingham Forest at this stage. And until they punish the bigger clubs, until they get hold of Manchester City and deal with those hundred and fifteen or one hundred and whatever it was points no one's going to give a crap what they spend and what they do because two points is no deterrent uh with respect to dave um when the deductions happened uh we played not in the forest we drew had we beaten them at that point they would still be on level terms with us now you know it's it's one of those things where it really it has affected not in the forest because they should be a little bit higher up in the division but i don't think it's the end for not in the forest or everton because there's, like you say, it's a mini league of six games left now for us, and we just need to get a couple of wins in. But the, the inconsistency is the thing that really, really does my head in. You know, 30 points for Luton, 17 points for Bournemouth, 17 points for Rotherham, 
Leeds, all those people that took deductions in the past, they've been horrific. Yeah, mm. you know, and, you know, Everton get some, they, Everton got two points deducted, but they got a, then they got forgiven because, or, or they took into consideration that the Ukraine war was on and they couldn't take 20 million pounds sponsorship from a, a Russian oligarch. Um, where, where does that come from? You know, they ousted one of those oligarchs from Chelsea, didn't they? You know, they ousted him. They stopped their transfers, all of that stuff. So there is no consistency. And until you can see that consistency, you're not going to trust the league, are you? And that's, that's the difficult bit for me. Um, mm. But just to get back to your first point, if it meant we stayed up, I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, I don't blame you. And, you know, you say, oh, I feel bad by saying that. But let's be real, man. We're all mates here. But at the end of the day, you support Luton. You don't support Forrest and Everton, Dave. So you're only going to care about Luton in terms of if you're going up against them. You might have a say in who you'd prefer to go down or how you prefer the league to end. But if it's between you and Arsenal, you and Fulham or you and Forrest, you're picking Luton, ain't you? So all let's just have it right. You know what all I mean? That's how you got to look at it, man. Like, you know, it's, it's not about feeling bad. It's about looking at your club and what's best for you. You know, this is this is how it works. But Emilio, you're a, you're a fan at the moment that can sit and chill a little bit. Normally, Fulham are used to at the times being down and fighting for it. But you've really put yourself in a mix of a, of a way that perhaps... These two gentlemen might look at the way you, and as a role model is how you they might want to run their clubs in terms of how Fulham have done in the last couple of seasons. But I can't help but ask the question. I reckon out of everybody on that I, I speak to on here, you're one that has the most vocal voice when it comes to this about the top six clubs and how you guys aren't respected in comparison to them. And I can't help but think that there's a lot of the lower division clubs that are going to look now and go, what about City, Chelsea, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal and reel the top six off? And say, do you know what? Like, what's happening with with us lot then in comparison to them six? And a lot of people have so I've titled it. What about City and Chelsea? What's going to happen to these two clubs if they're found guilty, Emilio? Yeah, exactly. And I, where I come from is obviously like Dave, Dave, you know, Steve Reynolds and other people watching. You now I come from a club that's never won much in terms of trophy wear, but you know, you know, I follow more. Have we lost him? He'll be back. We don't know what he's following now, do we? Hear me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's following more what? Well, let's following, have a guess. Following more, following more street. Oh, following here more. Here hear we go. He's back. Emilio's back. You said all yes. we got was all we got. Yeah, was, I was saying yes. More. Yeah, where I come it. from is literally low division club historically. But you know, we've been in the Premier League what over since the formation of the Premier League. We're thirteen consecutive years. You know, again, did we ever get respect for saying thirteen consecutive years in the Premier League? Never. We've been up and down a bit in the last six or seven years. But overall, if you look at the statistics, who's, which clubs have been in the Premier League for the longest duration? We're, we're in that top 20. So you, on paper, you could argue Fulham deserve to be a Premier League club. But we haven't won many trophies in our career. But I respect the smaller clubs because we, we rarely get the benefit of the doubt. Decisions rarely go our way. The big boys don't necessarily want the smaller clubs you know, to, to, to interfere in the Premier League. That's where I come from. Yeah, I am very vocal towards the big teams because... Money does talk when it comes to this sort of stuff. And we're seeing with Man City and Chelsea, they can spend what they like, but we're not necessarily seeing the relevant punishment imposed on them. You know, are they waiting for the end of the season to see where these teams land? Oh, Chelsea, you aren't in Europe this season. We'll deduct you another 10 points, but you're not going to get relegated. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't impact you. I, there's me being a cynic. They'll make a decision when the season's over. Look at what the impact is from deducting so many points and, and whether it impacts their final position. That's there's the, there's something inside me telling me about that. But more broadly, what's all of this doing to the, the product of Premier League and football? Fans being priced out by lots of clubs, VAR rules that are misinterpreted or, not, or misunderstood, luxury tax potentially coming, the blue card. Where's this? Where's this? Where's football going after all this? It's, 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 it's like, I think Dave Greg, I think you've mentioned the past that you're you're becoming less interested in football because. You know, what are we watching? We're watching different different decisions, inconsistency when it comes to VAR from refereeing, mm -hmm. from fines, penalty fines with FFP. Until we get some consistency, that I think the brand is losing a lot of respect. And where's this all heading? Is it going to be going to with this big, you know, Super League? Is that going to kick in? That's probably going to happen at some point because it's not about Man City playing Luton and Forest and Fulham every week. It's all about Man City playing Barcelona, Real every week. Neutral fans, money, sponsorship, that's what it's all about. It's all about money, not that they're playing a little Fulham or Forest to follow in, in a Premier League game. So 
I worry about what future of this product, the Premier League and the, and the football brand. Where, where's this all going? Because it's changing day on day. And I'm, I'm starting to lose more interest because what said, my only excitement is staying in the Premier League. If we can stay there, great. Are we ever going to win it? Unlikely. <coughs> can, will we get relegated? More so than get winning the league. So what's in it for Fulham? Mid-table stability, watching some of my big, big boys around the world. Not seeing Harry Kane, the so-called world-class player, you know, every week. That, that gives me pleasure as well. So I'll have to bring that one in, Dan. Obviously, scoring against you the other night. But, uh, I know. But, I know. but you see where I'm coming from. I just feel what's... I'm losing interest. I'm not as excited as I was 10 years ago. When we're in the Premier League, at times fighting for our lives, getting into Europe, competitive, beating the big boys. We had something to play for. Now I just feel like you're turning up on the pitch and, you know, you can turn on... 90 minutes you might be be the big team but get points against Lodo and just stay in the league it feels like it's lost its novelty it's lost its I don't know I just I, I'm not as excited going again which is why if I'm if I can't be bothered to go to a game you know I've got a season ticket I won't go 10 years ago absolutely I'll book my holidays around the games I won't go away until the game is confirmed and really did I miss a game but the last two or three seasons I honestly don't care now if I'm available I'll go if, I, if, I, if I'm not available I'll give up my season ticket for the game and, go, and not bother turning up. So it's there's a lot of people like me around the world, especially the people following the so-called smaller clubs like Luton, Forest, Sheffield, Burnley, and so forth. But yeah, there's a it, point. It's in like, that. yeah, it's like Emilio. The glory has got further and further away for clubs like yeah. Luton and Fulham and Forest. The, there's no real glory anymore. We we have to kind of feed feed on scraps. We have to kind of scrat around in the gutters, you know. And, and and we look at FA Cups and we look at like Carabao Cups and we look at league titles and like I cling to our sort of late seventies, late eighties stuff. Do you know what I mean? And it's like it's it's all it's all a sad indictment of what was once a sport, a yeah. game, and now it's become business, offices, yeah. money, stats, and and I think it's just incredibly sad. It's like you know, I mean, my old man was a proper football man. My granddad was a proper football man, hell of a yeah. player. And, and, you know, those two are no longer with us. And I think they, you know, I knew they, they used to despair at the way that the game was going. And I kind of thought, oh, I'll never be that sort of cynical about it or despondent about it. And and here I am, I'm just like previous generations of my family, you know. And I think a lot of, you know, the 86, if you like, think, well, where, when are we ever going to get a bite of the cake? Do you know what I'm saying? So I, it's, you know, we, we, success is staying up for us. And it's just, it feels a bit sort of, I don't know, all qualified and compromised really. But It's like the FA Cup. I, don't you know, I, used to, I don't know about you guys. I used to love waiting for the draw, it's eight o'clock on a yeah. Monday night, walking a Sunday, yeah. waiting as a championship team. Can we get a Premier League team at home? Now, if we did, if we were a championship team and got a Premier League team at home, you know, Fulham fans, you know, we'll turn up in our numbers. There'll be no away support. The Man United, the Man City, they're not going to care about coming to Fulham on the third round in the FA Cup. You know, they're going to no, turn up with a second string team. There's no yeah. incentive. I always remember the old days, replays every round, second replays at times in certain competitions. Mm. If you remember the 80s? So, you know, so, mm. yeah, exactly. I mean, so, you, you take that Liverpool at the Manchester United Liverpool quarter final, right? Mm. It was such a sore thumb because it was one of the it, it's it's one of the greatest games of football ever played in this country. That 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 four three that that Ahmed Diallo finished off at the end, but it's such a sore thumb because most of the FA Cup beyond a game like that, it's just unremarkable, unmemorable. Back in the day when I was a little lad, I used to be able to remember all the FA Cup winners back to the to the war where I kind of prided myself on it. And now I kind of start at, I think it's uh, the, the Palace Manchester United final in 1990. And I can remember all the way back, I can remember Tottenham and Coventry and Wimbledon, Liverpool, Everton, Liverpool, you know. Mm. And like FA Cup finals recently, if somebody said to me, you know, name the last 10 winners of the FA Cup, who cares, really? Okay. You know what I mean? So it, I, it's I a sad think, indictment. I generally used to think when you talk about third round cups, I know we've sort of gone off of what we were talking about the third round draw i even when i was in league two or division two the old division two i used to think luton could win it but now <laughs> you know you now you know we can't we literally yeah. can't compete yeah. with with the money you can't compete yeah. with the likes of manchester city no. and you can't you just can't so you just take what you can you know and i was hoping that we'd get in this round of the cups when we were in it for at least one round 
Um, I was hoping we'd get all the crap draws so we'd get further. But, you know, ultimately, even if we got to the final, we probably wouldn't win it. Um, and I'm like Dave, I used to know all the winners. I used to know all the winners. The only winners I remember recently is uh, that Manchester City 6, you know, they played some team from down the road. But um, mm. it's not the same. That, and, the, and Dave, that, that, that in itself is incredibly sad because mm. I found that embarrassing. It was so, in, you know, an FA Cup final, so one-sided. And that day, whatever you think of Watford, to go to Wembley and have your big day end like that... It, it was an embarrassment, really. You know what I mean? It, I, I, love the, I love the FA Cup. I love the, I love the FA Cup and always will. I mean, obviously, we won 14, so it's like our trophy. And everyone loves it, yeah. one, right? So, of course, the FA Cup. But when you look at it, it's, it's nowhere near where you, where it used to be, man. Nowhere no. near where it used to be. No. And even in my time, and I'm, I'm younger than you guys, and I used to wake up and go, right, who's got what's happening? Who are we getting? And now you hear people, I mean, Deji last night's on the channel. This is a Tottenham fan, by the way. He hasn't won anything in his lifetime, saying he doesn't want to win a trophy. I don't want to win trophy. I don't want to be competing in the FA Cup and the Carling and the Carabao Cup now. I want to be going for the Champions League and competing in that. Like, mm. that is mad to me. Like, so give me a trophy mm. any day of the week, man. Don't just yeah. make me get into a competition so I can play Maccabi Haifa one time in a group game. Do you know what I mean? Like, what is all that about? Like, don't win the bloody trophy, man. You know what I'm saying, like, let's be real. If I give if I give Luton an FA Cup next season, or give you a European chance to go and play Maccabi Haifa in the Europa Conference League, take the FA Cup, Dave. Yeah, Jesus Christ, absolutely take saying. the FA Cup. I, can I have it, please? Because I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. <laughs> well, never, never say never, bro. Never say never. There well. might be a massive takeover at Luton in ten years' time, and then all of a sudden, boom. You know, you never know, mate. You never know. We can only. Um, hope. You can only hope. Um, but listen, I, I think it's a it's a mad decision. I wanted to ask you, uh, Lou and Dave, I'll stay with you actually, because only because of what you said uh, at the start of it. Luxury tax in football, rumor probably not going to happen. But if it does happen, what a joke! It's laughable, isn't it? It's laughable. Um, it just gives everybody a credit card to spend as much as they want for all of their teams, and buy it out and go, you know, we have a calculated risk here that we could lose £100 million in fines, but we've got that, so let's not care and let's win a title. Let's win the FA Cup. Let's go to <laughs> Europe. And uh, we'll distribute it against the other teams that are not so good. And how's that going to help? Because it's not, is it, £100 million between the rest of the division? No, it's, it's, it's a load of, I'm going to say it, it's a load of bollocks. It's an absolute load of bollocks. And there is no way, there is no way that that would be successful you know why not you know this is a this is a side thing it would never happen because it can't because of the way the leagues are structured but i kind of like what they do in nfl to a point you know you, yeah you, i can see that if you win the league you get the last pick of the players you know that's yeah, what, yeah yeah you know, yeah everything absolutely evens up. everything evens up but the problem there you have is then you're enclosing the premier league as one one division so that mm. won't work so yeah, it, luxury tax. It, it just gives it gives the Saudis, it gives any rich owner the ability to spend crap loads of money because they know they've got billions of pounds and a hundred million or two hundred million thing, and which sounds obscene, doesn't it? That sort of money mm. is obscene, but for mm. a billionaire, it's nothing. And so they'll take mm. that risk. They'll take that risk to get the rewards that they'll get from the Premier League or winning the Champions League or eventually the European Super League or the World Cup League, because something's going to happen mm. in that way. So it, it, it's, it's a non it's a non-starter for me. It's an absolute mm. non-starter for me. There's got to be a different way of dealing with it. There's got to be a way that you know that if you spend two hundred million pounds, you're going to get deducted thirty. You know, two hundred million pounds over, you're going to get deducted thirty points. Then you won't do it, will you? Because you won't stay in the league at that point. That's the issue no. I think we have. It's just disappointing. And I just, mm. it really, it really upsets me because I, I, my club has been on the, the end of the biggest, the <clears> biggest <throat> exception, the biggest penalty ever. And it's disgusting. Mm. I think it's disgusting. But I just get disappointed with it all. Dan's gone. Yeah, let's take over. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> <Let's> take over. <laughs> Welcome to 12th Man with me, Dave Asprey. I'm here talking with Dave Gregory of Luton and Emilio Dinello from Fulham. Dan Potts has gone to the toilet. 
Oh, I didn't get a chance oh, to say. Oh, no, he went to, he went to get a snake oh, bite. Cider and black. Snake bite, yeah. <laughs> no, snake, snake bite calls. Um, no, I did actually have to go and answer my door and I had a drink sitting waiting. I didn't actually manage to get that back up. So, um, <laughs> But no, I remember I remember um, I could I could hear you, which was nice. Um, but I do feel like the rules, if that come in, would just be the start of football being ruined, in my opinion. That's just yeah. my opinion, though. A lot of people won't yeah. care because, you know, if you're involved in that club at the top, you're all right. It's been what you want. And naughty boy, spent too much again. Oh, dear. Sorry. <laughs> it's just what? like one joke. But Dan, right. what is the solution? What is the solution to to this financial stuff? Because, like you say, if you've got a multi-million, billion-pound owner who doesn't care how much he spends, what is the solution? I used to think, I used to look at the Scottish leagues and go, there's only two teams can win that, and practically only one team that can win it, and they win it every year. I'm looking at the Premier League now, and there's four, maybe. Maybe four that can win. We talk about six, but maybe four. And Three. it's all money. It's, well, yeah, and, and it's money orientated. And it, the league will become a joke if it's not competitive ever, and then everybody gets yeah. fed up. If Manchester City win it every year, people will go, well, it's no better than the Scottish Premier League, is it? Yeah. It's no better than the, the success pool just narrows, gets narrower and narrower yeah. and narrower, and it's boring. It's like it's the it's you see the Super League becoming a reality. You know, look, Bundesliga, you've only got really one team, maybe two. La Liga, mm. a couple, typically two teams. Italy, Serie A, it's been a little bit inconsistent in the last few years, but same, you see a pattern here. There's there's two or three and elite teams in each in each yeah. league. Thank God They're for like, Leverkusen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank God like, for Leverkusen. Eight, eight years ago, defeating all the yeah. all the odds to win the Premier League. That when's that next going to happen? Probably not no, in our I think life. The problem you've got as well. The problem you've got is they've tried to bring in financial fair play and profit and sustainability to try and even it out. What it's done is it disadvantaged everybody but Man City again <laughs> because mm. they've already got their team built. No one's, Everyone's trying to catch them up. Now, mm. Arsenal and some of the other teams, I don't really put them in the same bracket because we have spent a lot of money. So we can't sit there and say, how are we supposed to compete? Because our squad's bloody expensive as well, right? But let's just take Newcastle, for example. I know they're not down Absolutely. in the gutter, right? That's but the one done. Been That's taken the over one. by billionaires who have like 350 mm. billion. They put like Roman Abramovich and um, Sheikh Mansour in, in the gutter compared to how rich they are, right? They can't spend it now because the new rules have been implemented. But yeah. Man City and yeah. Chelsea were able to spend, 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 spend without these yeah. rules. And now it's yeah. like, go on, then try and catch us up. PSR now won't let you. So good luck. So Newcastle, mm. in their first season, have got Champions League being rich club. Second season, are being told... You know that Isak and Bruno, good players, haven't they? Say goodbye to them, otherwise you're in the mud. Mm. What? They've got three hundred and fifty billion pounds sitting in the bank, and they're not allowed to spend it. Like now, because of these PSR rules. Now, people might say that's that's unfair if they want to go and spend billions of pounds, but is it? Because it's their money; they can do what they want with it. So, mm. to answer the question, Dave, I think we've gone too far already, and I don't think anything we can bring in now is going to be fair. I just think it's, it's too far gone. Like what? How, unless you can t come back at me and think that would solve it. Then, then I'm all ears, but I just think we've we've allowed this for two decades under Roman and a decade under Sheikh Mansur, and now Newcastle. Who's next? And I, I don't know, man. The Cronkies as well, the Glazers, FSG. They've all spent loads of ridiculous amount of money. You know, I look at the Luton team the other night when we played you, Dave. And I look <laughs> yeah. at how you know I look at our bench and look at how much we'd spent on our squad and how much you spent on yours. And I know you had lots of injuries. But I'd like to I'd like to calculate how much she spent on that team and how much she spent on ours, and we'll try and say how fair it is. It's not fair, you know. You're trying to compete mm. at the top level. It's hard, but listen, I, I don't know what the answer is. I think we've gone. I think we're too far gone, man. Yeah, I think the Newcastle awesome. thing. And if I was a Newcastle owner, having billions and billions of pounds, I'd take the risk. I'd just spend it. I would literally just go out and buy some players right. and spend it because the president has been set by the punishment already been given. They haven't got hold of Manchester City. So mm -hmm. do you know what? As a Newcastle fan, would you not take the chance of winning the Champions League 100%. or winning the league and then being penalised a few years later because you still have all that glory and going? They, they mm -hmm. can say, oh, we'll take that title away from you. But genuinely, as a fan, it wouldn't ever take away from what you've achieved at that point. Yeah. Um so I just I just spend it, and there is no there is no reason not to because there is no deterrent to not do it. There's no deterrent; it's just not there. And I think that's the saddest thing with it all, and that's what you know worries me going forward. I mean, I love football, I love my club, but I just can't see um, anything like that working. You, 
if if it was if it was in place and it was they would be they would be shoving Man City down three divisions right now. That's what they'd be doing. They'd be they get in Chelsea and they'd be they'd be going right. You've overspent by crap loads of money. You're getting demoted too. Would that stop someone else then spending way way above their needs? Yeah, of course it would because it, they they will they won't be in the Premier League anymore because they'll go down three divisions. If it's that you're going down to the bottom division, you know they did it to yeah. Rangers. They did it to Rangers. Yeah, and yeah, why not, Rangers. Why not? I can't wait to see what they're going to say about Manchester City's uh, problems. I can't mm. wait to see how they're going to deal with the, with the Chelsea one. But until that time, if I was if I was the owner of Newcastle and I, I was a billionaire, I'd just spend it. I would spend it yeah, I would. for the consequences. That's what, Dave, that's what Mr Marinakis wanted to do. He told Steve Cooper, he told the people of Nottingham on the balcony of the council house the day after the win at Wembley, I'm going to give you what you want. I want to be competitive in this league. And OK, the spending and the transfer policy of Forest became a bit of a standing joke with everybody. But, you know, it's his money. And if he wants to, it's like me, if I want to go and buy 10 books off Amazon right now, who's there to stop me? And it, Yeah, it, and that's the thing, you Dave, know, you know, like, I remember Joe saying when he come on here once, like, if, if Leeds got a billionaire owner and he wants to spend it, <laughs> who are they to say they can't? Who are they to say, nah, you ain't spending it, mate. It's my money. So I'm with Dave. If I'm Newcastle, I'm thinking, I don't care about that profit, sustainability or financial fair play. If they want to find us, find us. Let's go for the glory. And then if they want to take it away from us, then us, Man City and Chelsea might get it taken away from us or stripped in about 10 years' time or a couple of decades. Because that's how long this is potentially going to take to actually investigate. 115 Mm. isn't 15. Mm. <laughs> then it's going to take a long time, you know. So that's the way I see it. 140, 140 more than us, right? There you go. And and, and and I'm glad we've touched on Newcastle because I think Newcastle are, are probably the most, you know, hurt by it in a way. And I think when the statement came out of Forest on the day that we had the points deducted, they were kind of, I, to me, I kind of saw it as leadership from my club in a way. It wasn't written by the Marinacci, it was written by somebody else in the club. I think maybe the lawyer who, who dealt with our case, what have you, but it was basically saying, you know, it was talking for Newcastle United probably more than anybody else. They've got untold riches, and and the Newcastle fans were, you know, told we're gonna we're gonna have all this financial ammunition that we can use, and now they've got to keep it locked in the shed, you know, and it's it's yeah. just so like Dave and Amelia have said, Dan, it's just the most tiresome subject it's like having a wet blanket wrapped around your head and taking all the oxygen yeah. you know it's just yeah. well i mean it is a negative it is a negative talk it's not a negative spin on it i mean steve to be fair has come up with a fairly reasonable option is potsy how about 100 million spending cap and that's fair to mm. say transfer budget yeah. 100 million yeah. waste budget 100 million but yeah. again the advantage is already there so if we now say you can't spend any more than 100 million tops in the transfer market Man City and Arsenal last season have already spent 250 million. So we're 150 million ahead of everyone already. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. It, it's hey, very, very hard. We'd have 75 million left to spend. It would be I'd be loving it. I'd be absolutely <laughs> it. listen, it's not it's not just the Premier League, though, is it? It's every division. No. Just look at look at Wrexham getting um the bundles from yeah. Netflix and everywhere else. Their wage bill was higher than every single in fact, the combination of their wage bill was higher than the first. League One and League Two, they were the top of all of them. They're they're playing Championship wages in League Two. You know, mm. they won't get punished for that. They're getting applauded for that. It doesn't matter. Um, you've got to look at the Championship right now. You know, there's money there. The, the, it's no, you know, the people at the top are the ones that've got. Apart from Ipswich, by the way, who have got financial backing, obviously, but the people up there have got the money. They can spend it, and they don't get really punished for it. I just big up, yeah. big up Ipswich, man. I want Ipswich to go up so badly, man. I really do. Yeah. Um, I really do. I know Joe don't, but I really do. Uh, big up to Connor, man. Hope you're well, bruv. Hope you're good. Um, yeah, thanks for good. joining us, mate. We're just talking about how uh, FFP is potentially ruining uh, everything and how points are being deducted still. And as an Everton fan, you're in the mix with that, mate. Um, we're going to finish that off with you because we've been talking about it for a while, but. How are you feeling as an Everton fan right now? What's going on with this points deduction thing? And has it put you on a downer for what could be a relegation scrap, bruv? Or are you feeling positive? Uh, I mean, I'll take the two. Um, I thought we were going to get four, so I'll take the two, um, to be honest. 
Um, the actual like reason we got it still is still stadium costs and, and they're putting in the mitigating circumstances now about the owner um, and the war in Europe, which has affected it. But <clears throat> I mean, I'll take two. I'll take the two. I know we're contesting and appealing. I don't know how, I, I don't know if anything, what would be the answer? Like, even if we win, surely we only win a point back. Um but I'm not that, that like it could have been a lot worse to be honest. It does make the win at the weekend a, a draw now, but um, yeah, I, I've, I think we're up for a third one as well. Um, it's just a bit never ending, I, I supposedly, but I don't know how they'd fit that in with this season. So maybe that comes next season with the luxury tax, and we get it with the luxury tax instead. Oh yeah, um, it's just a bit uh, crazy. I don't know how. For it to be called profit and sustainability, how you get out of it if you're in it because of stadium costs, because you're not going to see the stadium pay itself back till like years in the future. So we either need, we need someone with big money to come in anyway um, and buy us, but we will always be for these next like three seasons and sort of stuff. So unless somebody comes in in the summer or now who can really quickly balance the books or we sell our two big lads, um, we're always going to, while the stadium's being built, we're always going to be, you know, out of sight with it. So I'm a little bit worried that we might get used, to, we might have to just get used to um, the points deductions and then hopefully, and then the luxury tax next year, um, at least until the stadium's built, because there's no way to balance it out while you're still paying for the work and the manufacturing and, you know, all of that stuff. So, yeah, man. Listen, I, I... Imagine going into the next season knowing that you're potentially going to have points. To, to, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. It really is. It really is crazy. But listen, make sure you do me a favour, Connor. Take something off of Liverpool, please. Yeah, anything. I don't care if you beat them, draw against them. Just please take something from them, yeah? Uh, everyone else on here will be shaking their heads. Yeah, Dave is. But, I'm already, um... yeah, already shaking my head. Don't do that, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry. The record we've got against them, I really wouldn't worry. The thing is, I always want Everton to beat Liverpool. I always want Everton to beat Liverpool. It, it's just for the way I've always been. In 60 years of life, I've never wanted Liverpool to beat Everton. And, you know, Liverpool of the weekend should have won, but didn't. Yeah, yeah Liverpool, I mean, Liverpool have dropped some points there, but it's just Man United. I don't think Everton's record is great. I think, am I right, Connor, in saying that, isn't it like going back to like the Kevin Campbell days, bless him, big up to Kevin, like the last I mean, time that he scored a goal and it's won it for you in the Anfield Cup, whatever it was. I don't know. Yeah, that's at Anfield. That's at Anfield. We've, um, no, we won it uh, in the COVID years as well, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, this um, time is at Goodison, which we do have a better yeah. record at Goodison Park. I still think it's been a couple of years since we beat them, but it's um, a better record. And we've had a couple of draws last year. We should have beat them and Connor Cody's uh, goal was caught offside. Um, but I'm still not hopeful because they've, you know, they've got a lot to play for. Like They do every year, to be fair, when they're challenging. But yeah, I'm not hopeful and we're looking a bit knackered. I think it's going to be a very, um, what the scoreline is, I'm not too sure, but it's going to be very much Liverpool's momentum. It's going to look like that first half against United for them at the weekend it's going to look like that, um, but like 10 times worse, I reckon. I think they're just going to absolutely pepper us and we've just got to hope we can keep them out, get a set-piece goal or something and then close. Mm. Well, listen, before we come to a close with talking about stuff down the bottom, let's do something differently and talk about stuff at the top because you guys don't normally get a chance to talk about stuff at the top. Probably not because probably because you don't really care too much for it, if I'm honest. But um, let's get your opinions on it because it'll be interesting, not just for me, but for our listeners as well. Emilio, massive, massive opportunity for you to get yourself well involved in this title race, my friend. Got both <laughs> yes. of them at Craven Cottage. Got Man City and Liverpool. Hard place to go. We found out that. Tottenham found out that. Can you mm. do something in this title race that could take points off Man City and Liverpool for me? And then my second question is, who do you actually think will win the league? Um, I fancy us getting something against Liverpool. You know, I think we've had three close games against them this season. You have the League Cup on another bit of luck. I, you know, we could have, we probably could have gone through in that in that semi final. Look, if, if we go back to the League game, four three, we kept we were two one down. The fact that we had the audacity to go and take a three two lead at Anfield and and holding on comfortably to some extent, and then I've never remembered a game where you know you go to Anfield, score three goals, still lose the game, 
and you had four classic Liverpool goals from long range. McAllister's long range shot. They had still classic. Alexander Trent, Alexander Gordon scored a classic that game. So we were done by four outstanding shots on target by the Liverpool team. But we gave them a fright, four three. Then we had the League Cup. What we'll take going to Anfield? The audacity to go and take the lead at Anfield in this first leg of the semi final. Bit of bad luck second half, you know, they're one, two, one. I would have taken that who won defeat. And we got them at home in the second leg. One one again, ten minutes to go. Their keeper made a top class save from close range. That could have been two one. So look, we I think that Liverpool defence is there for the taking. You've seen Man United ex- expose them. Not a good Man United team. We've said that time and time again. And they've scored what seven goals against six, seven goals against Liverpool in two games? League the FA Cup and the league game. So I think we can get something against Liverpool. Man City, I'll answer your second question then. I fancy, I think Man City are probably the ones most likely to win the league. Not that, mm-hmm. not that I, want, I want Arsenal to win the league. I want a different team. I want, they're London-based. So if anyone who's a London-based fan, we want, the, we want the trophy to come to London, not up north. Thank you very much. But anyway, aside from that, I, just, I worry that Man City are going to do. They've had their bad spell. They're still there. They're knocking on the door. I thought they were somewhat unlucky against Real Madrid the other night. They played well and get a three or draw. They seem to have the experience winning big big games. I think they'll come to Craven College and probably beat us. You know, I think they'll, they'll have that momentum. They'll keep push, pushing and pushing and pushing. I fear for the neutral that Man City might will have enough to get get them over the line. I think we'll finish second, Dan, and Liverpool will probably finish third. That's my gut feel. I just worry now. Yeah. Man City not playing well at some parts of the season are still there. They've gone through that bad patch. No one's talking mm-hmm. about that. And you've no, got you're right, man. I, I fear the worst as well. I think Man City will win all seven, personally. And then I think it's about what Liverpool and Arsenal do. And I think we'll both drop points, personally. But listen, I've been wrong before. Um Dave, Luton, Dave, you've got Man City next, so you're going to beat them. That'll be nice. So thank you for that. <laughs> and then uh, it's all we'll play for. <clears throat> um, look, I said on our own podcast this week, if we get anything from Manchester City, it'd be a bloody miracle. But, do you know, I was hoping they wouldn't win uh, or draw in the Champions League and they'd rest half their team for, for the more important game because they could still put out their second string and deal with the, with the, the threat that we've got at the moment. Um, but Manchester have got to play us. They've got to play Nottingham Forest as well, haven't they? And, um, you know, I think they probably have the easier running, I think, of, of the teams at the top. And I think that's the issue, isn't it? I keep saying, and I know I'm clutching at straws here, so please take it as it's meant. We haven't had that shock result yet. So it's going to happen at some point. And I'm hoping it's Saturday because it's a long way for me to go. Um, I can't look past them. I'd rather they didn't win it. I'd rather they didn't win it. With all everything that's going on around them and all that money that's going on around them, I'd rather they didn't win it. And 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 I'm not just saying it because you support Arsenal. I would prefer Arsenal to win it too. Um, I've got lots of Gouda friends, and I think you know they're on the verge of it. But I think Arsenal's running is harder, and I think that's the problem. Um, you know, they may. You know what? You may get a couple of dogs. I, you know. We lose against Manchester City. I, I, with all due respect, Dave, I hope Nottingham Forest lose to Manchester City. And then we will. And th- th- there's the problem, isn't it? Because there's six points that you've got to work back from. You've got to play a different a few teams. I, I, I think I agree with the media. I think they'll probably end up winning it. They'll probably mm. end up winning it. And, um, Horrible, isn't it? Yeah, but, it, but, then, but, but then we're all sitting here and we've all started this conversation tonight about mm. points deductions for financial fair play and Man yeah. City not being punished and they get the glory again and everybody's going, oh, look at them. They're going to do a treble. They're going to do whatever. You know, they're going to win the Champions League and we're all sitting here going, yeah, but they spent all that money. <laughs> and, you know, th- there's there's a, there's the injustice. So out of the mm. three in the mix right now, I would prefer Arsenal to win it. And I'm not mm. saying that because of that. I prefer Arsenal to win it. But I, I think... We're going to be left because Manchester City are stronger, more money, and they've just uh, they've got an easier running, in my opinion. So yeah, um, I can't, uh, I can't say you. <laughs> but you say know what? Yeah. If if Luton get a shock result at the weekend, I'm going to wear something really good. Uh, May if you beat them or if you draw to them, I'll wear a Luton shirt next week on here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Dave Have Gregory, a song, a song, Dave Gregory, please. <laughs> oh, mate. oh, yeah, there it is. That comes late night. Done, a Mangini. How do you know I'm not wearing yeah, the song? Roberto Mangini. Hey, how do you know I'm not wearing the song already, Dave? Um, you only see me from God, the You leave so much to the imagination, DJ. It's great. <laughs> but, Dan, if that happens, I'd love to see it in the Luton shirt, mate. Mate, well, listen, there's a damn pot that plays for Luton, so I'm halfway there anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, you know, I can just put pretend I'm in for the night. The pretend I am the damn yeah. pot that plays for Luton, and then. Put a Luton shirt on. Done. Easy. Um, probably get loads of views as well. They think, oh my God, he's got damn pot from Luton on. Um, so yeah, that's a deal, mate. If we get if you get a draw or a win against City, yeah. you're in safe. Up. You're in safe waters there, mate. I'll tell you, you're in safe waters. If, <laughs> if if we last 10 minutes without conceding, I'll be pleased. Uh, well, we're, we're, our, t our squad is so de devastated at the moment. Depleted. Yeah. It's so depleted. And and the thing is, the people that are on the verge, they ain't coming back for this game because it's not worth risking them. They're coming back for the Brentford game, which is a must-win for us. So Man City is a free hit. If we get anything, it'll be a miracle. I'm just going to have a good day out. Yeah, I don't blame you, mate. Absolutely. Um, Dave, what are you saying for the title race? You've got to play City. I hope you can yeah. do something good. Them. You did last year. You got a draw. We did, yeah. Um, we did and scored, and scored the best goal seen on the planet last year. That's class, 19. man. Yeah, all 11 had a touch, 19 passes. Manchester City were made to look like Forest Green Rovers or Sutton United. It was an incredible goal. It never got the recognition it deserved. But then again, it, it wasn't in the top six. It was in the other 86. So it was never going to get the recognition. <laughs> I I mean, the thing is, I, I, it is, I can't settle them. Normally, I'd just say City. But I think they've had a real problem in, in replacing Ilkay Gundogan. I don't think mm. they're as good this season as he as they were last year without him. I thought he was a wonderful he's a wonderful player, a leader, a terrific footballer. Um I'm I don't I want Phil Foden to win it because I think he's wonderful to watch and he's a great player, Phil Foden. He's he's my he's one of my favourite players. You know, the goal the goals he scored uh was it last week or whatever. The goal one is Burnabout, it was yeah. incredible. Oh, mate. Brilliant. Yeah. He hadn't been in the game. He's got, I think Phil Foden's wonderful, right? Um, but funnily enough, the, the team of the three of them that I'm most impressed... I, I, for a while, I thought Liverpool will win it as a leaving present for Klopp. And that kind of emotional bow way would push them to win it. But, you know, they showed a lack of killer instinct at Old Trafford to dominate like that and then to be 2-1 down was really not very good. To me, the most impressive of the three last weekend was Arsenal, mm. because that win at Brighton was was it was done with the minimum of fuss against a good team and a good club, and and you know, I kind of you know the the difference between Arsenal now and the different and, and the Arsenal say twelve months ago when the when the wheels were beginning to get a little bit wobbly, you know, the draw at Manchester City last year they got beat four 0 at Manchester City and they were obliterated. A draw at Manchester City. I thought, you know, if, if I was an Arsenal fan getting a nil-nil draw at Manchester City in comparison to what happened last year, I'd be well happy. And then that game on Saturday night, I mean, because we were playing on, on Sunday at midnight or whenever it was um, in, in Tottenham, um, I, I watched it and I kind of thought, oh, this, I, I, I write Arsenal, let's see what you made of. And they were excellent. They were excellent. I do believe, I I do laugh because I think Kai Havertz is playing really, really well. And he wasn't yeah. um, everybody's favourite at the start of the season, was he? Let's be honest. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, Messrs. Judges and everybody else. And Ooh, this guy's crap. He should have been the side, whatever. And Kai Havertz has, has come through that. He's playing really, really well. Um, Declan Rice is, is a, one of my favourite players. I think he's fantastic. Great character, great leader. And I think he's made them a far better team. I actually think that's money really, really well spent. So <laughs> I, I guess I'm edging. Oh, your uncle Dave's looking after your pot seat. I'm edging <laughs> to wanting. I'm, I'm edging to wanting Arsenal to win it. I'm a bit like Emilio. Somebody is not, you know, they haven't won it for a while. I think they're quite likable, more likable than they have been for a while. Um, you know, Liverpool. <sighs> I've never been a big fan of Klopp because I think he's an absolute gentleman. Everything goes his way. And I think a bit of what we call in, in this part of the world a mardas when it's not. You know, we, we had this idea that here's this great German gentleman who's going to come and bring dignity and, and sportsmanship to our league. He's done nothing of the sort. I don't think he's, you know, 
they've got terrific players. You know, Salah's a great player. Nunez is good. Um, Alexis McAllister's been brilliant. Mm. You know, I mean, I don't think there's much between the three of them. You know, no. ordinarily, ordinarily, City would sit above the other two, but I, I don't think that's good. And, and I, I honestly don't know who's going to win it. The logic is Arsenal. The, uh, sorry, the head is Manchester City, and the heart. Weirdly, I never thought I'd ever say this. It's Arsenal, but <laughs> time will tell. At least, at least, it's not a foregone conclusion this time. Which, which, mm. you know, we've talked about so much that's wrong with the game in this country at the moment and the structure, the fact that it could go to the wire with three, you know, it, the best thing would be if it went to the last day of the season, that Sunday afternoon, the 19th of May, four o'clock, and all three are in with a chance. Now that's going to be great. You know, in fact, we might this season have, you know, every game in the Premier League on the final Sunday, meaning something at top and bottom, which which actually would be great, you know. Yeah, listen, I me mean, not. Big up to you all for wanting my club to win the league. That's all I can say. Yeah. Look, you're you're all emotional, Potsy. Is that a tear? Is that a glint of a well, tear in your eye, mate? I didn't expect it. I, I can't say. I don't normally get this love. This is why I like this show. When I'm in the other show, they're like, I hope you bloody lose it. I can't stand off. Hey. Do you want me to be lawless for a bit? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> That's one bloke. It's West Ham, like, isn't it? It's West Ham, you silly <laughs> boo. <laughs> Go on it, innit? It's your West Ham, mate. Oh, yeah. You look like him as well when you do that. Wow. Um, Connor, let's come to you lastly, mate, before we get some predictions for this weekend's games. Uh, title race, what, what do you want and what do you see happening? Um, I mean, anyone but Liverpool. Um, firstly, <laughs> anyone but now. Um, but like, I don't know. I thought maybe Liverpool would win it. I thought maybe Liverpool would win it because um, Klopp going, but I don't know, they've just got weakness. So, Who's got um, the music? Hang on, is that me? Oh, it's Dave. Okay, cool. Sorry, go on, go on, Connor, carry on, please. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so like, I, I thought it'd be Liverpool just because it's Klopp and he's leaving and football gods would write it in. Uh, but... They missed chances against United and I think they missed chances when they were against City. I think they could have, both teams could have won that game. But I think Liverpool, Luis Diaz, I think is a really great player up until finishing. I think, I know he got the goal against United and it was a nice finish. But I think he could have scored, he could have had a hat-trick when I was watching the United game, to be honest. Same with Nunes. I think Nunes could have had a hat-trick as well. I think he's quite wasteful in front of goal. Does everything really good, Bosch scoring. Um so I don't want them to win, and I don't. I don't know now. They blinked first. I'm not too sure they will. City. I my head says it'll be City because they're coming. They do this every like the last two years. They'll drag their feet from like January, then coming up to this time of year, April, May, they start picking up results, and they'll go on like a ten game undefeated streak and really push for the final hurdle. And it looks like they're doing that again. You've got Foden scoring again now. You've got Kevin De Bruyne back, who they missed massively when he was out injured. Um, it's fair to say when he goes, I don't know what they're going to do for creativity because he absolutely creates all of everything for them. Um, but I would like Arsenal because I've got a mate who's an Arsenal fan and I like Arteta because he used to play for us. So I'd love Arsenal too, but... I think it's going to be City, unfortunately. And also City, again, in the same sort of trouble that we're in and I'm not hearing much about them. So, for that reason as well, I don't really want City to win it. You don't don't think Arsenal will do it though, Connor? No, I think City will just power through now. I think I think they've been here before. Um, I hope Arsenal will, but you also have the harder running of games. You've got at least yeah. three teams that would love to take points off you, like... Chelsea would love to be the ones to cost you it. Tottenham would love to be the ones to cost you it. And I think even though it's a bit of an older rivalry, um, you've got United the last day who I think would love to take something off your title chase. So you've just you play three teams that I think would really love to get, you know, be the reason you stumble. Mm, facts, man. I can't lie. Listen, let me stick with you, Connor. You Monday night football against Chelsea, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. What do you reckon then? I, I really uh, don't know because Chelsea are so all over the place, aren't they? Um, they are That's so hard. Bridge, right? Yeah, yeah. And we don't tend to do very well in the capital. So a tough one for us. Um, 
Yeah, I, th I think, honestly, I think we could get a draw there. I'd love to get a 1-0 win. Um, same thing I'm hoping for in the derby. We just nick a goal and then absolutely shuts up shop. Um, and I think it's possible against this Chelsea. Um, so I'd like to go with, like, I think it'll be a one all something like that. Yeah, man. Uh, listen, they could have beat Burnley or Sheffield United. This team are a billion pound bottle jobs, mate. That is exactly what they are. As Gary Neville called them, they how you can put a team together that costs a billion pounds or just under, and not get a result of Burnley or Sheffield United. That to me, they do not deserve to be in the top bloody wherever they are nine or whatever. No. Imagine getting to April and then only just getting into the top half of the league after spending a billion pounds. <laughs> what an absolute mess. I mean, I'm here for it. It's brilliant. I love it. I think it's great. A lot of my Chelsea fans, mates, are fat, like real giving it and the stuff. And oh my God, Arsenal didn't beat Bayern. <laughs> and I look and I think this lack of self awareness is absolutely embarrassing as far as I'm concerned. They are an absolute mess and they're laughing at us in the Champions League while they're struggling to get in the top half of the table. Anyway, I hope you beat them, Connor, is basically what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think a draw is a good result, man. I think a draw is a wise, wise result to go for. I think that would be good to go to Stamford Bridge because, like you say, Chelsea can turn it on, to be fair. They've got players that can. But, um, yeah, they're not in the best of form, man. So we'll see what happens there. Um, we might as well come to you next, Dave Luton. I know you've said already that you just want a miracle. <laughs> you see a miracle? No. No, it depends how many beers I have before the game. I'd imagine <laughs> it's a miracle coming on. Uh, but uh, I'd be happy if we keep the score down. That's how I look at it. I mean, that's more important. Let's, let's not lose. I, I said this on our own podcast the other day. Don't lose 5, 6, 7 deal because that would be really detrimental. Uh, the, the squad and, and the side at the moment is a, it's bare bones. So if... Anything's going to happen. It's can we keep a clean sheet for a little bit longer than 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 if we're lucky. If we're going to get a consolation goal, can we score it first? Because it makes my day more enjoyable. But apart from that, I can't see any other result than a Manchester City win. And I'm hoping that it's not too big. But like I said, if we do win, you'll be in a you'll be in a Luton shirt. I'll be happy. Dave wants to see me in a thong. Uh, that'll have to be personal pictures, Dave. Uh, can't, can't, can't but I, I genuinely it, it's one of those games like when I came to Arsenal uh, the other night I didn't think we were going to get a result we didn't get a result when I went to Tottenham I thought we could have got a result and had we had a full team we might have got a result we were five minutes away from hanging on uh, but last time we played Manchester City we were absolutely rolled over and I can't see anything I can't see any difference so I'm going for the day, but I, I, I reckon we're going to lose three or four nil. So. Oh, I really hope it ain't. I really hope it ain't high because their goal difference will then be ca caught catching up exactly. with everyone. It's not what I want, man. I'd take it even if you have to lose, just one nil do. Just that'll do. Do you just know what? If it's, if it's one nil, I'm doing a lap around their stadium. <laughs> you know, I'm literally going to do that. You know, one <laughs> even, even two nil. You know, that would be be okay for us because but, but six or seven it's the opposite of you isn't it we're, we're in this fight and that is a, like an extra point against us if we can't get it so i'm not very i'm not very uh optimistic today but uh, you know like i say i'll have a few beers before the game and then i might look at it differently yeah man listen welcome to emilio dave what you're saying for forest this weekend mate you've got wolves at home mm. Um, Nuno, I just don't Nuno, know. Nuno going back. I, f I forgot Nuno going well, back. There, there's, the, there's a couple of connections. Obviously, Nuno and, and Morgan. Uh, Willie Bolly, if he'd have been fit, but um, Big Willie's not going to be with us this weekend. Um, we'll miss his stiffening our resolve at the back. So um, I just don't know, Tom, because Forrest can be excellent one minute, as they were. They were absolutely superb against Fulham, I thought, in both facets of the game. In, in attacking first half and then managing the game second half. When Fulham came back into it, I thought it was a terrific performance. Maybe our best um, in a complete, most complete performance of the season, I thought. And then, at, you know, at Tottenham, we were, apart from a half hour, the last half hour, the first half, where I thought we played well, Chris Wood scores instead of hit, hitting the post. It could have been 2-1. Cool, and, yeah. And, you know, there, was, there, was, there were positives to take out of Tottenham. Second half... Once, once Ange took uh, Bissouma and Papi Sarr off and put Betancourt and Hoivier on, it changed. And then M Mickey van der Ven, who I thought was the best player on the field, 
scored a worldie. He's a super player, Mickey van der Ven. So I just don't know. I mean, the thing is, you know, Dave's talked about his Luton boys being a bit, um, you know, patched together at the moment. I think Gary O'Neill's got the same issue for Wolves. I mean, Sarabia was their centre forward last week. Um, and I don't think many of their guys are going to be back on Saturday. So the thing is, it presents itself as a there's a, a possibility of a Forest win. If Forest play like they did against Fulham, I think they'll win. But the trouble with Forest is once you, we all feel once you've got you think you've got Forest pegged, Forest will go and do something different. But um, you know, it's it's difficult to know. I I think we'll sneak it. I think it, I don't think it'd be easy. I mean, you know, Wolves have got some good lads. Eight hey? is playing well. They've got some, you know, Kilman's a good lad at the back. They'll be angry about the VAR controversy um, last weekend against West Ham. In fact, it's it, it's a, it's the VAR derby. This it's probably the two teams who feel they've got the most um, uh, perceived injustices against them through VAR this year. Nottingham Forest and Wolverhampton Wanderers. So I don't know. It'd be close. The trouble is, do I stick my neck out? So if I say we win, we'll probably lose. So no, Wolves will win. <laughs> the reverse psychology card, mate. Nothing wrong with that, Dave. Um, <laughs> Emilio, West Ham, can you shut Lawless up for me, please? <laughs> well, he went quiet when we stuffed them 5 0 at the cottage early yeah. in the season. Never heard from him. <laughs> I think he went off the WhatsApp group, did he, for a while? And then he came back. <laughs> yes. Silence, mate. Uh, look, we've got a shocking record of their ground with previously at Upton Park in the London Stadium. So. They're playing with Leverkusen tonight, so I'm hoping they'll be a little bit tight. I think they'll be focusing on that aim, more that tight. They think they've mm -hmm. over two legs, they can probably get to the semis. You know, I'd like to think we can get something out of the game. We've got to, we've got to recover from where we were pre-international games. The last three games have been a bit poor, to be honest. To say the Forest game, you know, first half we were shocking, probably our worst worst first half performance of the season. Sheffield United again mm. from one up, almost four one down. In, in this, it's just not good enough. Was Newcastle? There's some more encouraging signs. I think we were the better team throughout. We didn't deserve to lose against Newcastle, but there's one bit of quality from Guimara. Guimara did nothing all game. He popped up in the right place in a sec, late in a second, and buried the winner. So that was gut wrenching because I didn't think we deserved to lose, but I don't think we did enough to win the game. A lot of possession, good movement, final third, final ball, not quite enough. We didn't make the keeper making up saves for me. So. If we take that level of quality performance, good you know, hold, good possession. You know, we had what I think 60, 65 percent possession against Newcastle. That's that's pretty impressive, right? If we can take that to West Ham, play ball, hold, you know, be on the on the front foot, we can get something out of the game. I don't think we'll win. I think we'll probably our way record this season isn't good enough. I think we'll probably get a one-all draw potentially. Um, we've got to stop the rot, as they say. I know a lot of people are saying. Fulham's players, their heads are at the beach because there's not much to play for, but there is a lot to play for. If, if Forest, if you could beat Wolves on uh, at the weekend, Dave, you know, mm. uh, beat Chelsea, then and we can find a way of beating West Ham, then suddenly top mm. 10, top 11 is not unrealistic. I'm not, we're not going to get into Europe. I, ne I never thought we would, and it wouldn't be good for the club that we would get into Europe. Play, we haven't got the squad there, but I'd like to finish just a little bit higher, just push up a couple more places. If we could be the best club in West London, fantastic, but the last three <laughs> games, blown it the last few games we've had easier looking games we've only picked up one point out of nine so i think we've lost that momentum so mm. get back to form mm. let's keep lawless his mouth shut basically mm. and uh, then hopefully uh you know i think rich are saying fulham three two i'd like i'd like to think we can go there and win but i'm not sure i'm not sure not the way we've been playing the last week or so we haven't been good enough so a bit like you said dave one minute we're, we're doing a spectacular next minute we can't beat the likes of Burnley or Sheffield United. So we, we need to sort out that consistency next season. But I'm going mm. for one point at the weekend. Let's see, man. I, I, I think there'll be goals in this one, Emilio. I think yeah. there will. I can yeah, see it's... goals, man. I can see like a 3 2 to one of the mm. other side. <laughs> I think there could be a real cracker this one. I really do. Yeah. Um, in a few minutes, Wolves definitely ain't is... great. You know what I mean? But West Ham, again, it's a. I know the fans keep saying they don't want David Moyes, but again, I'm asking Dave, Dave if you've got a manager that's getting you into Europe, winning your European trophy, yeah, I'd want it. Take, do you want that or do you want to skirt with relegation, flirt with the relegation and not win anything just because you're saying you're playing a tackle? I just don't get it. I, you know, I don't like Percy, I don't like David Moyes, but what more can you get out of this this squad of players? 
that's yeah. happening. Well, I, I, think it, I think you know the, the West Ham West Ham fans want a new direction. They want pretty football, but they played pretty football under some of the other managers, and they just about stayed up. David Moyes kept them up. David Moyes yeah. kept them um, relevant, and then he got sacked. They brought him back. They put him into Europe for what? This will be the third year. They've won a European trophy, the first mm. trophy they've won in 43 years. Mm. They're mm. like, yeah, we want this guy gone. <laughs> it's brilliant. Unbelievable. It. There we go. it, is, it is crazy, but there we go. Listen, people, make sure you do me a favour. Go follow Dave Asprey. Go follow Emilio at Teddy Nello and at Cottage Talk. Make sure you go follow Dave at Owen, the town podcast as well for your looted content. Make sure you go follow Collar as well. His Twitter handle is there, C William 61097 on Twitter for all Everton content as well. And uh, we will see you next time. We are out of here. Stay tuned because you're going to be sent over to Lee Judges TV where myself, Lee, Henry and Deji will be talking all things Arsenal and Spurs for this weekend. So make sure that you go over there and we will see you next time, people. Take it easy. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>